Hey everybody and welcome back to 3COG. Today we're going to talk about some proposed federal gun laws for 2021. Uh, before I get into that, so Amazon has the laser targets, at the very least the larger uh, hit area ones back in stock and they've been out for a minute. So laser target, laser cartridge, you put this inside your weapon, you shoot, you get an indication. It's a great dry firing tool and with the cost of ammo being what it is right now, uh, the combined total of these two items is like 60 or $70, and it's definitely worth it. Great tool. Highly recommend it. Link below. All right, so getting into it. Proposed federal laws. Remember, these are federal. Uh, so, H.R. 30, to increase public safety by punishing and deterring firearms tracking. Now, with all of these proposed laws, the text of the law is not out yet. So we have to go off of what's in the title and the title alone to get an idea of what they're working on. The only real concerning thing about HR 30 is the potential of putting more limitations on interstate travel with weapons. And we'll see what that law actually says once it's published. Uh, all right. So HR 121 to provide for the hiring of 200 additional ATF agents. Well, I do believe that all gun laws are unconstitutional, so I really don't believe in hiring more people to enforce unconstitutional gun laws. Uh, to amend Title 18, the United States Code, to provide a seven-day waiting period before a semi-automatic firearm, a silencer, armor-piercing ammunition, or large-capacity ammunition magazine may be transferred. So this is 125. So they want to put in place a federally mandated seven-day waiting period for you to get standard capacity magazines, for you to get a suppressor, which you already had to wait between six months and a year for the background check to come through on that, and then they want to tack on another one-week waiting period. Um, semi-automatic firearm, armor-piercing ammunition, right? And it's all going to be based on their verbiage and their definition of what that stuff is. And there's a lot of common ammo, which based on bad, badly written laws can be classified as armor-piercing when it really isn't. Um, yeah, so waiting periods are hilarious because, A, they have not been proven to do anything. If you look at states that have mandatory waiting periods, they, they're not working. They're not doing what they say they will. And a waiting period, if I am of a criminal mindset, doesn't stop me from using any of the tools I already have for illegal activity, right? So it, it's been proven to not work. It's not going to work. So obviously I oppose a federal seven-day waiting period on those items. It's ridiculous. Uh, to provide for the licensing of firearm and ammunition possession, the registration of firearms, and to prohibit the possession of certain ammunition. This is uh, 127. So to provide for the licensing. Okay, well, I don't agree with firearms licensing, period. Uh, I should not have to have a license to exercise my constitutionally affirmed right. And I should not have to... Uh, pay a tax because that's what a licensing fee is, is a tax to exercise my constitutional right, uh, my constitutionally affirmed right. So disagree with it, point blank, right off the, right off the gate. Um, registration of firearms, I don't agree with that either at all. It, it, there is no point in registering firearms unless the government wants to know who has all the firearms so that they can take them if they deem it necessary. That's the only point of a firearm registry. Uh, prohibit the possession of certain types of ammo. So 125 said that you were going to have to wait seven days to get armor-piercing ammo, but 127 just bans the possession of certain types of ammo, which I'm sure would be armor-penetrating um, and other more fun, spicy rounds. So not, not good at all. That's 127. Uh, 130, that's another feel-good law, and I hate feel-good laws. To require the safe storage of firearms and ammunition, and to require the investigation of reports of improper storage of firearms or ammunition. So this is the federal government telling me how I have to store my personal property. Well, that's wrong right, right off the bat, right? They don't have the right to tell me what to do in my house. 
um, and then require the investigation of reports of improperly stored ammo or weapons. This is like red flag law level stuff where I don't like my neighbor across the road. So I call the cops and be like, yeah, Jimbo said he was improperly storing his rifle. And then the police go hit his house to verify how he's storing his personal property. That's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Should not happen. Uh, and the last one, so that was 130. And the last one is 167. It's to prohibit the transfer of a firearm at a gun show by a person who is not a federally licensed firearms dealer. So what they're talking about here is the supposed gun show loophole, which is not really a thing, okay? But what they're saying is they want to make it illegal for me as an individual person to sell a gun to another person at a gun show. Again, why is the federal government telling me what I can do with my private property in regard to another adult person verify their ID and verify they're an adult. And if I want to sell them my private property, why does the federal government have any say of whether they can or can't or whether I can or can't? It's bad. Guys, this is the beginning of 2021. Okay. We are, we are what, 15 days in. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. They're going to keep coming after our individual freedoms and try to restrict it so that they have more control. So write your elected representatives, tell them to oppose these bills and not to support them and make your voice heard, all right? Talk about it. So thank you all very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on 3Cog.